All right, we're going to be doing a video talking about the, the bank, one of the oldest banks in America, the Bank of North America. This is their actual book. Um, my wife found a copy of this thing and got it. Let me show you what it says. So here we have the Bank of North America, Philadelphia National Bank, founded 1781. The story of its progress through the past quarter of a century. Um, it's an older book. For sure, I have to be very careful with it. It's an old book. Okay, pages, page three. Okay, the first two paragraphs, let me read this. Um, Ever since the Bank of North America relieved, relieved the acute distress of the nation in the years following the revolution, national banks have been the able and faithful supporters of the nation's financial life. The Bank of North America has been faithful to its original record and has never neglected the requests of necessities of the government. At times it has even supplied four and one half times the amount of its own capital. Uh, in other words, what it has in its stock, it can give you up to four and one half times that. It's deception, in other words. During the last quarter century, the demands have been fewer. At the time of the Spanish-American War, the government bond issue was so quickly absorbed by an eager public that the national banks uh, were not called upon to any great extent for support in the emergency. In other words, the people supported the government and not the bank. So that's kind of an interesting thing. But let me go to page 27 here. Um, page 27. Down there you can see page 27. Um, okay, right here. In spite of the low rate of interest on money during the last 27 years, or 25 years, excuse me, the bank has never suspended dividends. This result is due to the fact that the bank has been careful not to back any enterprise to such an extent that it would be heavily involved by or responsible for its ultimate failure or success. Occasionally, when the proportion of safe loans was, were small, the bank has had difficulty in placing the capital at its disposal. In 1892, when the public confidence in investments was wavering, great difficulty was experienced in lending money. Although the deposits of the bank increased nearly $3 million over the previous year on this account, the bank prudently reduced its dividends to 12%. On May 28, 1892, only nine banks in Philadelphia had a surplus larger than their capital, but the Bank of North America was first upon the list. Having practically no interests abroad, the bank was not affected by the, the Depression in Europe, which began in 1890, three years previous to the crisis of 1893. This depression was caused by a deficiency in the food supply and resulted in the withdrawal of foreign loans from the United States, which created a stringency in the money market. The crisis was postponed by the inflation in the currency occasioned by um, <clears throat> the issue of silver certificates in June 1890. But this artificial increase only rendered the crisis the more severe when it came. The crisis of 1893, more than any other, was aggravated by the withdrawal of foreign loans and the withdrawal was greatly increased by the distrust of the currency. Foreign investors feared that the change from a gold to a silver standard would decimate the value of their American securities. This coupled with the possible change in political control and the threatened radical alteration in the tariff created widespread distrust and destroyed confidence. <laughs> Not at all like today, huh? The climax of the crisis began or came in May, but the Bank of North America stood firm and its fiscal policy was again splendidly vindicated. The public and other financial institutions eagerly watched every move and what the bank did not did, none hesitated to do. Failure, fo failure followed failure, especially in small businesses, and only the timely action of the large banking institutions averted more severe conditions. No banking business <clears throat> can be conducted without taking legitimate risks, and although the financial policy of the Bank of North America has been one of steady conservatism, it took promptly, especially when it knew the, the men, the risk it believed to be right. The action was justified by universal expressions of confidence, favorable comment and praise, 
and the bank proved itself one of the pillars of the national financial world. Huh. And this is not about me here being elected, by the way. It's, <laughs> Brian was, were elected. Uh, not me, but isn't this interesting? Boy, there's just nothing. Uh, history doesn't repeat itself, does it? <laughs> um, you see how they do this thing? They want confidence in the money, and there's no confidence, and so they have to put more money into here, and we'll issue some silver certificates, and we'll put uh, people are losing their faith in this, and we'll shift money over this way and move over money this way. It's a scam. Again, using an analogy here. You let me borrow your car, and you come for it. Where's my car at? Oh, it's over at uh, this other place here. I'll, I'll go get it for you. They say, no, I'd actually like to go get it. You go to go get your car. Oh, no, it's not here. It's over this place over here. Well, here it is. Uh, okay, there's a similar car. You can let you borrow a similar car. and you know, You're know, you being scammed. But the banks can do that. And you just think, oh, that's normal. Um, this is the kind of stuff that's leading up to the end time system. And remember, the end time system, the mark of the beast, it's not just about worshiping the beast. It's about receiving that mark. It's a financial system that damns people to the lake of fire for all of eternity if they get to messing around with it. Very interesting how the scam works, how the merchants of the earth come out and are working with Rome. So you have the political and you have the financial institutions coming together and merging into one. You, if you study Roman, the ancient Roman system, one of their biggest problems that they had over and over again was how do you pay the troops? Well, we'll just send the troops, the Roman soldiers in, the legions of Rome, we'll send them into an area and we'll say that you can plunder when you take over this certain place. But the problem was they didn't always win, especially when they went against the barbaric hordes, the Northern Europeans, in other words. Um, that's why this is born again barbarian, by the way, because barbarian in your King James Bible is a reference to the Northern Europeans. Doesn't mean I'm uncivilized or whatever else. Well, I'm not really part of the Roman system. So, you know, in that sense, I guess you could call me uncivilized and off grid and whatever. But uh, my ancestors were called barbarians in the New Testament. That's why this I'm a born again barbarian. That's what the whole point is of that. But the Romans constantly had problems. They would try to fight the barbarians thinking we can be paid by taking the spoils of war. Well, they didn't often get the spoils of war. And then how do you pay them? Because there's only so much gold. And so they're going, you know, we're having problems with our financing and financing our military. And we try to build this and this emperor goes way out of hand and builds a whole bunch of stuff in Rome. And, and you know, people get mad about it. And the soldiers are saying, when are we getting paid? You know, and there's all these issues. And the Jews come along and they say, we can help you. And the miry clay reference to Israel in the King James Bible. There's nobody else that Myrie Clay is referring to. The nation of Israel comes along and says, well, we can, we can kind of get some little financial stuff worked out here. And the Myrie Clay joins the Iron Legions of Rome and becomes the fifth kingdom. Part weak, part strong. See, that's how it works. And all the banking scam stuff comes after that merger of the Myrie Clay and the Iron. And now they have the military aspect, the strength of the banking system and the insurance. But they also have that money, the financing of it. That's why all the wars that are waged, the bankers are making lots of money from it. So that they can wage more wars. And they can wage more wars to make more money so that they can wage more wars to wage more, <laughs> to get more money to make more wars. Makes sense. Yeah, if you're crazy. So just another interesting little video there showing some of the quotes of that book. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed that, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.